welcome to another exciting episode of A Legion on Zoom. What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Legion on Zoom. Super excited and once again super nervous because it is an honor, and we'll get to it. This is Chez. Yo, and this is Miguel. And this is Rod. What's up? Yo, and everybody, yes, like Chess is saying, we are excited, nervous, you know, starstruck. We are excited to have an incredible artist on the show <laughs> with us today. You've seen <laughs> his work on awesome titles such as Captain America, Champions, Red Sonja, Lone Ranger, and recently mm. did an incredible uh, one shot with Cable Reloaded and just wrapped up his epic run on Way of X. We got none other than Bob Quinn on the show. Welcome, sir. Yes. Oh it's man, Bobby is of Quinius. But uh, I, I don't want to say it's not, like I feel like I'm being oversold here, but like I do appreciate <laughs> the kind words. <laughs> Listen, well, you are not being oversold. If anything, you're being undersold. You're yeah, extremely there, talented. There you go. I like that. To say more good things about me before <laughs> I, I won't. I'm not. Why am I even on the show if I'm not going to have my ego stroked? Lovingly? Oh, trust me, that's what we're all about: <laughs> stroking the egos oh. of men. Man, I picked the right show. This is great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah we're because we're excited that obviously we're fans of your work, man. And like as we're seeing, you know, obviously right now for us, Way of X hasn't ended. Yeah, it's ending next week. But when people are seeing this, hearing this, you saw the ending. It'll be great. Uh, but we're fucking excited to have you on the show. Uh, but before we get into Way of X and all that yeah. good stuff, okay. Just want to get to know you a little bit. Tell us a All little right. bit about yourself. Like how how did you get into? Why did you want to do comics? What's what's up? Um. Uh, so my, my comics journey begins at the tender age of I don't even remember how young. Uh, where normal children might have been read golden books to go to sleep. My father would read me the gag strips from Mad Magazine. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So it was like I. Um. It's actually funny because I didn't think at any point I was going to be like a comic book artist. I thought I was going to be a comic strip guy like because all my heroes were like dave berg and don martin and duck edwing and like mort drucker and all those guys yeah. so like and like i read comics growing up a bit right and like i kind of would like phase in and out of them as as i saw artists i liked and stuff like that um but then you know i, I don't even remember what year it was i had like an online web comic that nobody read that was absolutely terrible <laughs> um and you know uh eventually found my way to a situation where um i was given the opportunity to draw my own graphic novel. Uh, and I took it because I knew that I'd kick myself if I didn't at least try to do it, finished it, and then just kind of lucked my way into a bunch of gigs over at Dynamite and then literally lucked my way into a bunch of gigs over at Marvel. And here I am today. Like, but my, my, my I, I don't understand how it works. I don't know how you break into comics. It just kind of happens if you believe in your smell, I guess. Right. Like, I was just like, I don't know. I don't have any other plans. I better figure it out. <laughs> it's like I just keep drawing pictures and I just keep getting money. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> yeah, it's a little it was a little like that for me, so I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty smooth as journey as it gets. Um actually, continuing with the eagle stroking, you seem to be such a renaissance man that is that a giant box over your shoulder? Uh, there is, I'll tell you what's okay. So here's, here's the story. Um, my wife and I are currently moving. We're leaving Los Angeles, heading to the frozen North of St. Paul, Minnesota. Oh. So I had to have all of my, I had to bring all the amps that were in storage back to the apartment so that they could be put onto a truck and loaded, uh, like in two weeks. So <laughs> behind me, orange OR 15 Marshall class five Vox AC 30 over here. We have a Vox AC four, uh, Epiphone valve junior, a Fuchs lucky seven a uh mesa dual rectifier road king and a fender uh super reverb yeah so that's that's the amp loadout over here oh yo yes that's awesome i will yeah. say i hope they're not in storage when you go to minnesota right they should be properly placed in your apartment and you should be playing them all I, I, I actually really enjoy the wall of amps right now so i'm probably gonna keep <laughs> this it looks really impressive that's what <laughs> i was saying so... like you should just connect them all together and just play them in oh yeah no we're, we're, we're gonna split this signal we're gonna load it we're gonna play all of them at the highest volume at the same time to irritate my new neighbors yes. really give them a, a, a taste of things to come <laughs> baptize the home this all begs the question are there guitars anywhere in the vicinity or is oh that yeah like out of the uh, way? That, those it's are out of the those way. are all cool. in the closet there's right. like 13 of them over there it, what, it's or, what's your main axe uh so my two favorites i have a uh 
Les Paul custom silver burst. And then Ooh. I have a uh, Telly vintage American vintage reissue, which is like the one step below custom shop from Fender. And it's just the best. Um, but yeah, a that's of that, culture. I, I'd like to think so. Yes. <laughs> I also yeah. play piano. I play. A... <laughs> really? Yeah, actually. Because <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like you were making fun of yourself yeah, for a second. Exactly. But like, like, That's, like, I, I kind of was, though, because I, I, yeah, like, I feel like I've been like, okay, I also play piano and I play trumpet for a while. And like, like, I play a lot of instruments. I also draw comics pretty good, right? Like, I feel like a big jerk. <laughs> Sir, you are an artiste. Yes, there you go. <laughs> the real man about town. Exactly. And we per- personally, for us here at the Legion on Zoom, we love this because, like, as you can see, at least from my uh, uh, background, like we're we're musicians here. We're big into. I actually have a box AC30 right there in the back. Uh, oh yeah, rock- yeah. And the three of us, we've jammed in the past. We're, we're you know we play guitar. You know, I see the Megadeth shirt. Yeah, that's so right. yeah, <laughs> we we actually Rod and I just saw them last night at the yeah. metal tour of the year. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, man. It's, last it's, it's, night. I, I- I haven't seen a show since Clutch came through LA recently. I don't even remember what it was. It was like two years ago. Oh no! And then and then Clutch was doing all of those like live from the Doom Saloon where they were just like live streaming all their concerts, and we we got all of those. Um, so yeah, that's that's what we've been doing music wise. All right. And so you mentioned Clutch. I wonder, like, so what 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 kind of music? What kind of stuff do you like to play? Oh, uh, what do I like to play? I don't know. I'm like so. I was in I was in I was in bands for years and years and years, and it was like all basically like. If you took like ACDC and and like Rolling Stones and like just turn it up louder and faster. And that was usually what we were playing. Yeah. Um, but the music I listen to is not that like uh, currently on heavy rotation is uh, Suicide Silence and uh, Kubla Khan. And uh, what are the other ones? Uh, I've been listening to the Distillers a lot recently as well. Oh. So I don't know. <laughs> All right, a little bit of everything there, man. That's yeah. that's that's dope. And and so, is there? I'm assuming you know. You mentioned there's a web comic out there. Are there also videos of you rocking now out there on YouTube? We're gonna add all those links on there. We're gonna do our research. To you know what? Off. I don't know. I don't. It, it was so long ago now that I don't know if any of those old videos even exist anymore. If they ever made their way to YouTube, I'd have to look for them. They they might be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I haven't searched for them in a long time. I was also a much worse guitarist back then, so I don't know. <laughs> They're and probably now wildly them, embarrassing. <laughs> now that you mentioned them, they will definitely be out there on the internet. Oh somewhere. yeah, I guarantee it. I'm like, man, I hope nobody found these. Somebody's found them. <laughs> yes. Oh, indeed. Do, um, as you're drawing, do you have a specific soundtrack, or does each issue or panel need its own like musical inspiration, or is there no music involved at all? Uh, when I'm when I'm doing layouts, I can't have any sound. Any sound distracts me, and then I can't concentrate on like the storytelling mm-hmm. and, and panel layout and stuff like that. Um, when I'm actually drawing, it depends. Um, so like the cable reloaded issue, definitely like I had I had my sugar in heavy rotation for that yes. one just because it was like wow. It was just such a like the the issue was so crazy and everything was cranked to eleven. I was just like, if I'm not listening to metal during this, I'm going to be doing myself and the the, the readers a disservice. <laughs> but then, gotta, like when I was, I, oh, I gotta go go, I, I gotta go back and reread that cable reloaded. Now listening to Meshuga. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> is it, turn bleed up as loud as it'll go, and you'll probably have a pretty good sense of where my head was at when I was drawing it. <laughs> awesome. That's a four D experience right there. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking awesome. And so tell us with that, like in terms of your work, you know, you use no music, you get you get this fact that what is a day in the life for Bob Quinn like? Oh, uh, it's it's incredibly boring. I wake up, I make myself a bagel. I, ha- I grab a cup of coffee and then I sit in this exact chair until lunchtime um, drawing. And then I eat lunch with my wife, who is currently, you know, also working from home because we're living in the end times, apparently. Uh, And then usually around two or three in the afternoon, I will have finished my first page uh, of inks for the day. And then I will usually pencil another page between that time and about six or seven o'clock today. I actually finished at four thirty. I was very proud of myself. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now, now in the entire process, when you start a page, 
Mm-hmm. Do you already have um, all the writing for that issue? Do you just have the writing for the page that you're currently working on? Or like, what's the order of input essentially for a book? Like, it depends on the process. And I think it depends on how busy the writer is. So like, for every, so like for Way of X and everything I've ever done with Cy Spurrier, basically the the editor at Marvel will contact me and go, hey, do you want to draw this thing? Here's the guy that's writing it. And I go, yeah, OK, that sounds good. And then they just give me the whole script and then it's all there. Like, like you know, page five, draw four panels. Here's what's in the panel. Here's what they're saying. Um, and then, you know, uh, I just kind of budget my time and try to make sure that I have everything done on time so I don't get in trouble and they want to work with me again. Um, and then, but for Cable Reloaded, it was actually really cool because um, Al Ewing sent me like five pages of it. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And like, uh, it was, it was like, like I said, it was like super over the top. Yeah. Like there's all the jokes about bullets and pouches. And I was like, all right, well, it's time to bust out the, the cyber force issues and we're going to start drawing... <laughs> <laughs> the way I believed you had to draw comics when I was 13, which was great. So um, I I drew the first few pages and then Al saw what I was doing and he's like, oh, you want to push this real 90s, huh? And I was like, hell yeah, I do. Yeah. So at that point, he gave me another five pages, which were, again, escalating the over over the topness. And I kept pushing and pushing. And so like it would be it was this really cool back and forth call and response of like, Here's what I think it is. Well, here's what I think it is. Oh, that's what you think it is. This is what I think it is. Oh yeah, let's go. Until <laughs> by the end, we had this totally goofy issue that was super rad and a lot of fun. And I don't know. I, I really enjoyed the process. And uh, I, I I think that the final product also uh, showed how much I enjoyed it. At least I hope it did because I, I I really enjoyed the crap out of it. Yeah, no, for sure. I love that issue, and also because it, it's really that's the way you bring cable back you know because like C- cable's been kid cable for a long time and mm-hmm. you know old man cable came back at the end of the cable run mm-hmm. by G- uh, gary dugan and, and phil noto and, and and all right but that, that was like all right we're, you're kind of back but now cable reloaded is like the first issue with cable back and, it's, and if you're gonna bring him back you gotta do it <laughs> that way like the beginning is just him you know throwing himself off of a, like the his spaceship into the the other planet like just yeah throwing the- himself in with the biggest <laughs> boots i could draw and then the boots exploding and then him hitting the planet and exploding and then finding a bunch of monsters and all of them explode like every page something blows up it was the best it was just the best <laughs> And like, and literally, and then you had like the biggest bomb that Boom Boom has ever made. You know that she's getting powered up by that uh, mm-hmm. the, the, from the 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 the, Krako, the no Arako mutant. I forgot their name. And eh, yeah, Cora. Insane. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the Korra. whole the whole thing was great. And that that page bummed me out. I was like, I, I need more space for the size of this bomb. But it was like six panels. So I was like, well, I guess I got to fit these all in here somehow. <laughs> Yeah, no, but honestly, I think kudos to you because it, you know, yes, we we noticed how much fun you were uh, having with that. It, it, it was it was it was infectious with with as we were reading it, and it really it wasn't like you're saying goofy, but it really wasn't goofy. Like it was like epic. Like it felt like I'm watching like a blockbuster action film movie. That's just like I'm in it. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm strapped in, enjoying the ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, when I say goofy, I just I just mean that like there there was a there was a like it was epic and huge, but there was also a lightness to it. Yeah um that that really appealed to me which is you know uh, uh, i i tend to think of it sometimes as 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 a little silly but like it was also very big right like i, I don't know i i have a i have very particular tastes when it comes to that kind of thing and uh that that one that one definitely ticked all the boxes for me so yeah <laughs> And, w- oh. and would would you say that that kind of taste comes from you? You're saying you came from more of a comics, like you know the the your your dad would read Mad Magazine, like that kind of. Humor. Well, yeah. To to that end, I mean, like I invariably will go for the joke if there is a potential joke in a panel. Like, and if I can find a way to make it sort of sillier, I will. And I think um, at least in my staging and stuff like that, you will see a lot of comic strip influence because. Um, you know, you will see a certain amount of like, you know, from here, you know, sort of medium shots of people talking and then reactions and stuff like that. Like I did, I did, I did a fair number of those in in way of X actually. Um, just because like, I think there's a certain language, like visual language that, that people understand, right? Like this is, this is the format of gag strips. So when you see that, you understand that what you're seeing is probably a joke. Um, so yeah, I, I, I did a bunch of that. Um, but like the, the funny thing is, is that, uh, like that ultra nineties, Mark Silvestri, Rob Liefeld, Jim Lee stuff is 
the first thing that got me into like comic books proper. Like I remember it was, I don't even know how many years ago it was, but like my, um, my cousin had gotten real into it for some reason. He brought home, not the first four issue mini series, but like the first of the ongoing cyber force issues home. And I looked at the cover where it's like rip claw jumping over everybody going like, ah, and I was like, what is this? And I like, I immediately poured through the entire issue and had to buy every, every single one of them. Um, and I was like, yeah, this is, this is rad. This is, this is super cool. I want to learn how to do this. And then I'd stop drawing for forever. Uh, and then got real, and then got pulled back in by people like Scotty young and, uh, uh like um sean murphy stuff on hellblazer i really liked um yeah all, all kinds of stuff so like I, I think i think i'm sort of a, an amalgam of all of my uh influences and i i, I hope that in a, to a certain extent they show up on the page but that i'm also me i don't know uh but yeah the, the the comic strip stuff is definitely still a huge influence especially as far as like staging and pacing goes for me uh on the page and you definitely have you? a very unique style Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's good. I, you, you know when I've drawn it. <laughs> Hopefully it's not off-putting. You're like, oh, that guy. Yeah, I can tell every time he puts a page on it's a piece of crap. <laughs> well, I mean, to be honest, I'm, you're actually responsible for one of, like, my favorite panels ever. I believe it's an issue two of Way of X when they first enter David's head. No. That they show everything that's going on at once. Inside oh of. yeah yeah that I panel that is so busy and but yeah everything. that's a mural like that should be spray painted on a wall somewhere like <laughs> on the side that, of a van yeah, <laughs> or that or that <laughs> traveling the, the country of- <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> but that panel is amazing and um you're also responsible if i'm not mistaken um somebody correct me if i'm wrong for drawing nightcrawler's biggest bamf it might be uh, it, i don't know do that, you that, hold that title uh i mean i'll take it if it's there yeah that that first one in uh in way of x1 where he's bamfing out of the sky with all of his buddies i don't know if that's the biggest bamf it might be it's pretty cool. no I was, well the, no the biggest bamf is like oh the biggest bamf. Yeah. oh you're right no the no that one i did that's yes what, i do that's what i was yes referring yes to. sorry yes that's yes that one I do hold the title. <laughs> Guaranteed nobody's gone bigger than that. Uh, obviously, for the fans out there, if you haven't read Way of X, what, what the fuck's wrong with you? You've been reading it. Yeah, uh, but, but obviously, we're talking about that awesome scene, which I think it's the second to last issue. I think it was when it came out where Nightcrawler fucking powered up, souped up by Fa- uh, Fabian uh, uh, Cortez, uh, yeah. just freaking bamfed a moon a moon that was hitting to mars but and bamfed it not just once it wasn't just like a one it was like bamfing it getting it out yeah it was like four or five times and something to put it back into orbit (laughs) he moved a celestial body like that's like that's insane and one of the biggest (laughs) things about that whole series of way of x which once again if you haven't like even heard of it if you haven't read it there's something wrong with you go read it go get it go look at it even even if you're dyslexic and you can't read go look at it yeah (laughs) because it's it's amazing yeah so when it comes to your art i I know that you draw still pictures but as i'm reading the comic it feels like they're moving like and thank you (laughs) like it feels like i'm reading a cartoon show if that makes any sense well, yeah, like I mean, with that, the that, biggest bamf, like you saw it in motion, like like I saw it, like I didn't just see the stills. When I read through all of Way of X, it's like I'm watching an episode of a series. Yeah, well, I mean, that could be. There's a number of reasons that that could be. the The first is is that like my actual introduction to the X Men universe was 100 percent the cartoon show. Um, you know that that's just kind of yeah. how I was introduced to it, and then you know eventually my friends brought over a bunch of issues of like, you know, Wolverine getting all the adamantium pulled out of his body. And I was like, Oh, this is gross. This is so cool. <laughs> and uh, so there was that. And then I also, um, I am a, uh, I'm a film school graduate. So, you know, it, uh, there's probably a bit of that in there, right? Like, you know, this crap all plays like a movie to me. So I guess that I try to lot. capture some of that stuff when I'm, when I'm drawing it. And then, you, you know, do. uh, Obviously, the the love of cartoons growing up. I I watch Batman the animated series constantly. So, you know, all that all all those influences kind of mush together into whatever ends up on the page at some point or another. So, are you self taught, or did you also go to school for drawing? Uh, so I mean, like you know, I 
I had like high school art classes and stuff like that, which which I took. I I was I was graced I was graced to be just old enough to to, to get those in school before you know all, all the budget cuts and stuff got rid of all the art programs. So you know I did I did do that, and then you know my mom saw I like to uh, to draw. So like I grew up in Milwaukee, was or I, I grew up in a suburb uh, north of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and we had the uh, Milwaukee Art Museum, which is actually a very nice museum. Should you be in the area, go check it out. Uh, but they also offered like sort of uh, weekend art classes. So you know my mom, to her credit, uh, tried to nurture the the love of art within me, and then I stopped drawing for. A long time and then started drawing again uh because i got bored at a job that you want to hear a weird story i'll tell you a weird story yeah, yeah, so please, um, for, please. so but very I, quickly I, not to, what's a long time of not drawing just for the fans uh, i didn't draw through college i didn't draw much after college probably for about it's probably a, a span of about eight to ten years i didn't really draw much. damn wow yeah yeah it's pretty crazy so so here um uh, for for your listeners before i was a comic book uh illustrator i was a producer and designer of video games oh, um sure. so i would call people on the phone and go why does this video game suck make it better click right like and that was yeah. the kind of job and then eventually i was at the thing so i'd like sit there and like i'd you know i'd script out what was supposed to happen when you walk through the door yeah. And then like the door opens and then like you pick up the box and you throw it like I would I would do that stuff. So like I would design the levels or I would call people on the phone and say, why are you designing the level shitty? That was that was my job. Um, but uh, that all of that eventually brought me to the great company of Activision, which you might have heard of because of, of all this, all of the drunks and sexual assault going on. I yeah. never saw it. Thank God. <laughs> nor was I a perpetrator. You're welcome. So I was going to say I've heard of it because of Spider-Man, but you know. Oh, okay, great. That's also a great thing that you could enjoy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not the butt touching or the drunks. So exactly. there you go. Um, so I ended up there. I was working on the Skylanders game. Uh, which was pretty cool, but I was work I was not working on the main game that which is the one where you take toys, put it on the portal, toys appear in the game, and you have fun. I was working with a good friend of mine on a virtual world that the kids like when, when they first launched it, they were like, Oh, you know, this is pretty cool, but we feel like we need to have a value add to these toys. There needs to be something more to them than you just appear in the game. So we actually had like an online world where you could go and you could chat with other players and like, you know, build stuff and all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, but at a certain point, Activision was like, we don't know if this is making enough money because that's, you know, they're they're a big company. They make a ton of cash. You know, they have machines where you put in a hundred million dollars and out comes a billion dollars. We had one yeah. where you put in like one to five million and only spit out 60 and they're like that's not enough dollars so <laughs> it's not american like, this is not the american way right yeah. so they were like all right we're gonna just press pause on this but you guys are not fired while we figure out what you're doing and we're like okay so there um activision is down on oceanside in santa monica and just yeah. down oceanside is a blick art materials and i was like well i like drawing I haven't done it in a long time and I have nothing to do at work. So I just went down, got like <laughs> a couple of pencils. I got a notebook and then just sat at my desk and was like drawing stupid crap all day. Um, and then my and then they, they decided to switch that up and they were like, OK, well, we're not going to do this anymore. Your boss is fired. The other person we have is fired, but you can move on to the main game. And I was like, I don't want to make console games anymore. Left, went to another job where I would just draw out my lunch period. And then just kept drawing, kept drawing, kept drawing, kept drawing. And then I drew comic books because I didn't want to do what I was doing anymore. And that's that's literally all it takes. Kids draw every day. So simple. <laughs> and and it's okay to take a pause for like eight to ten years and then keep drawing every day afterwards. That's yeah, incredible. exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it was like it was like I paused for I paused for eight to ten years. And then in the span of about three or four, I was comic book ready. That's all it takes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that whole journey in a movie. Were you reading oh, comics man. throughout I, I, that You know time? what? I think I still have a bunch of the notebooks that you can see my old, terrible drawings. They are very bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure people would pay for those. I am sure. You say that now, but I'm the, sure people would pay for those. You, too, can commemorate the start of the journey to Marvel <laughs> Artist. <laughs> you basically just made your own infomercial right there. Like, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> man, being on this show is paying off. I'm going to be making bank. This is great. <laughs> so, while you were making video games, were you still reading comics consistently? Or did you also take a break from comic books? Um, 
I would only pick up books when there was something that was like really exciting to me visually. So for a long time, I wasn't reading. And then I was reading, um, like I said, it was like when Scotty Young took over New X-Men, I started reading that. And then I kind of fell off for a minute there. And then, like I said, when um, when Sean Murphy did Hellblazer, I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, I, basically, what would happen is, is like I would see somebody who would change the way I thought you had to draw in order to be a comic book artist. And then suddenly went, oh, wait a second. Maybe I can do this. Right. Because for the longest time, I thought what you had to do was crosshatch the shit out of everything. And then like all the panels had to be like weird Sharpie lines. And then like things had to be all over the place. And all the ladies had to have a, I had a waist this tiny with the boobs this big, right? Like, and then every man had to have all the shoulder pads and a billion and a billion pouches. And I was like, this is not really my thing. But then like, I was reading Invincible really uh, religiously uh, because like, I I super liked like Ryan Otley and, um, and uh, Corey, uh, Corey Walker. Cause like they drew a little bit differently, a little bit simpler, but like still kind of bouncy kind of animated feeling. Um, and then, uh, I was reading Hellboy super religiously because like he did, Mike Mignola was basically just drawing potatoes and then saying, (laughs) yeah, this is a, this is a red potato. So, you know, that it's Hellboy. And I was like, okay, well, I guess comic (laughs) books can look like that too. And then, um, I was reading, I was reading Chew because Rob Guillory just kind of does whatever the hell he wants to do. And it looks rad. And so like the more I was like sort of exposing myself to the, to the breadth of like what comic books can be, the more I was like, oh, you know what, even though I don't draw like the guys that I grew up admiring, maybe I could actually do this because, you know, um, I guess I guess to a certain extent, I'm extremely fast and pages look pretty good. So and I can and I know how to tell a story visually because of my uh, because of my schooling. So I was like, I feel like I could probably do this job and I could do it pretty good. So and I like it a heck of a lot more than going into an office and being yelled at by a boss who doesn't know what my job is. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, yeah, I could yeah. imagine. Um, is there anything from your time at Activision with like uh, trying to put the levels together and stuff like that that mm-hmm. you maybe brought over to putting the panels together for a page? Because uh, I would assume that there's some carryover from like the flow of a video game to the flow of a comic. Th- not really, because what you video games is weird because you you approach level design through what they call setups, right? So it's like first setup think think about mario brothers right like first thing we do is we introduce you into how to jump and pick up the thing like it's 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 very mechanical yeah um and um i i think at least for me instead of figuring out fun ways to fit different like uh mechanics together right it's like okay well i can i can pick up a box and i can put the box here and i can also jump right so like how are different ways that i can introduce boxes and jumping right but like comics are much more at least for me if i'm not writing for myself it's much more um like a like fitting puzzle pieces together right like here's how much dialogue is in this panel here's what the important action on the page is here's kind of how we need to have the eye flow through it so it's more of like you know as opposed to mashing together different things to see ways that ways to make it fun to interact with this is much more how do I fit these pieces together so it's easily readable that the page flows nicely, uh, that we're getting all the important bits of information from panel to panel. Um, so it, it, it's there's some crossover maybe, but I, I do sort of think of them as, as, as very different practices, at least for me anyway. Oh, and, wow. and, actually, and actually with that, I have like a comment and, and a question, and more mm-hmm. of a compliment actually too, because like what you're describing like with, well, yeah. yes, wait, wait, give oh. me all three <laughs> more compliments, more of the compliments, less yeah, questions. Less questions. <laughs> <laughs> Is it because in Way of X, like what you're describing is it's like that's one of the things that I really, really loved about Way of X because like um I don't think you get like there's some people, I think some artists that do like action really, really fucking well, but like mm-hmm. dialogue conversations, uh, I'm mm-hmm. like uh like you lost me, no. And then there's people who do the gritty, just conversation kind of thing, slow pace, slow burn mm-hmm. really well, but then the action they don't do it. But like you in Way of X, I was super surprised that it has all of it, no? And and like it has a lot of dialogue and like deep dialogue, right? Like there's like mm-hmm. Nightcrawler questioning what it is to have yeah. a soul and, mm-hmm. and as a Catholic. And then 
But then we also have these epic um, uh, uh, panels, right? This, we just talked about the Big Bang thing. We have Onslaught is there, like one of the biggest villains, you know, for the X Men, and mm-hmm. it, it, it's like, so how how was it like that? Like working with Sai uh, for that, you know, with his dialogue, you know, his, his, his script and with what you're describing. Because you, we, first of all, the last compliment, but you did a wonderful job because like you kept <laughs> it all like so well. Like all, I, I was surprised. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Sai is. A real, I, I think Sai is an incredible writer. Um, and he and I, uh, I, I don't know what it is about, about he and I, but we share a lot of sensibilities, um, both in just like stuff we like, uh, but also in just like sense of humor and stuff like that. Like, um, you know, uh, the, the first time I picked up a script and it said everybody in the panel barfs, I was like, oh, this is my guy. <laughs> Nobody else is out here doing the puke humor. And, you know, like you I, drew I said, a I grew- lot of barf. I, I do it. so much bar. I, I again, I I grew up reading Gross Out Mad magazine. I was like, this this is my guy. I, can't I was believe actually going to ask you about that. Like, yeah. if um all that love for Mad magazine translated into you drawing all that bar for Peter. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I was like, I was like, I, I need more bar panels, right? So like, any chance I got, you know, even there's a. Yeah, even even Way of X Five ha- had a had a huge bar panel, right? Yeah, like, exactly. I was like, this is this is this is great. So like. We, we have a lot of really good sensibility matches between us, right? Like, I think we have, we have a very similar sense of humor. We both like, uh, you know, I, I do like to think about sort of philosophy and, and metaphysics and stuff like that. So, like, to that, to that end, I, was, I felt like I was very able to sort of get what he was going for, like, both sort of, like, thematically, but also emotionally from, from panel to panel. And... Yeah. For me, at least, when you're drawing a book like this, um, it's very important to sort of, you know, get in and kind of try to inhabit the the mind of the character and sort of figure out where they are sort of in their emotional journey uh, through the through the story. And I've been called in the past by old co-workers and friends a human cartoon. So I have a tendency <laughs> to make big faces myself and emote very, very much, very yeah. much a lot. Very animated. Um, yeah. So, so to that end, I have a tendency to try to capture as much of that as possible on the page. And like, you know, it's, it's still, it's still pictures. And I think a lot of artists probably, you know, I, I, I don't know if it's just sort of like a, well, this is how I know how to draw stuff, but like, you know, there's, there's always a lot of grimacing, and sort of furrowed brows and stuff like that. But like, to me, you can't, because it's still pictures, you have to go a little bigger. Right. And yeah. so, be, and because of that, I think, I think some of the emotional stuff, I hope at least the emotional stuff in my work tends to play pretty good. So that's sort of my approach to that. And I think that's kind of why, you know, Cy and I work together. It's, it, it, it's, it's me having, uh, again, us having good, sensibility overlap and then me being kind of able to drill into the feeling of what he's trying to go for and then being able to ideally actually get it onto the page for you so that you 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 feel what they feel as you read <laughs> that actually all like that you, you know th- it made that's- sense <laughs> okay as long as it made sense it, it made felt sense. like a bunch of horse shit gobbledygook as i was saying it, it but you know <laughs> it made sense <laughs> No, and, and I think honestly, that's fucking dope. Like, it's great because that actually, what you're describing reminds me there was this one scene in, in, in Way of X, I think it might have been two or three, one of the f- er, er, early issues where, like, because the other stuff that we were mentioning is the humor, no? And, and like, there was this one scene where Nightcrawler is at the park with. I forgot his name. I think it's uh, uh, Kraken or what the guy with that, with the, with the, uh, you know, that died on in Araco that he's like going crazy that if he takes his thing, his, his. Oh, Gorgon. Gorgon, Gorgon, exactly. Yeah, Gorgon. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that was that, four, I think. So it's a four very, five. it's a very serious scene, and Nightcrawler's there, and it's like messed up, and like you know, people might just die right now, and it's like you get it, exactly. You get the emotions from the people's faces, you know, and Fabian's that asshole look as he's doing yeah. this. <laughs> I learned <laughs> to hate him. That's a real man. douche. <laughs> Yo, yeah. I learned to hate him in that issue. Yeah, I, but I love, <laughs> I love to hate him, man. I love to hate him, and but, yeah. and, but then it flips. The humor with Nightcrawler saving the day and then getting like all mm-hmm. covered in ice cream and all that like that's that's awesome like that that's just so cool to be able to have all of that together in a way in, in a way that none of that felt like out of place or anything like that or over the top or, or anything like that so it's, yeah. that's awesome 
Well, yeah, thank you. Again, I think, you know, if, if you look back at that, it was it it played for laughs because, again, in, in that sequence where he's having basically the slapstick fall in the ice cream thing, it was all played very straight. It was all played very comic strip. Um, and I, th- I think that's part of what makes it work I, but for me anyway, because I, I don't know if it, if it had been like all crazy panels and like all over the place. I, I don't know. I don't know that the humor would have played because it's it, I, I again, I played it very, very straight on. Yeah. Um, to just letting you take in what uh, how goofy it was. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, considering what you're capable of, have you ever been working on a book and drawn a panel where you just have to step back and just look at your work and be like, "Wow, I'm Bob fucking Quinn." <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What typically happens is, is uh, I will, I will step back and I'll look at a page and I go, "Well." didn't fuck it up too bad and then i'll move on <laughs> <laughs> I, I i mean uh, for for what it's worth the the big thing for me is that i try my very very best on every page to do the best thing i can do on that day and hope that i've learned something from yesterday you yeah. know it's like the my, my my favorite old quote i think is from gene colin who said never look at a page after you turn it in Cause it's like invariably you're going to see something you could have done better. You know what I mean? That's a and, good point. but, but, but to that end, what I, what I do is if I do see something, I think I could have done better. I make note of it and go, okay, well, how, how could that scene have looked better? How could that shot have been more dramatic? How could I have done it? Essentially done it in a way that would have heightened the experience for the reader. And that's something like, cause like I, I'm super be super honest when when they gave me when they said hey do you want to work on an x-men book do you want to do way of x i was like yeah but in the back of my mind i was like i don't know if i'm i don't know if i'm ready to do this right like you know i i i just read house of x and powers of 10 and like i saw what you know you know pepe laraz was doing and i was all like yeah i'm i'm not that dude you know what i mean <laughs> and then you know i saw what uh valerio shitty uh, skitty skitty I can't remember. I, I always pronounce it wrong. I anyway, anyway, I saw what Valerio was doing yeah. on uh, on Sword, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm not that guy." You know what I mean? <laughs> and I was I, I was turning in pages, and I was writing to the to the editors, and I was like, you know, after I looked at him and I saw those other books, and I was like, "You guys need to push me harder." Like I feel like I'm not delivering an X Men experience. And I got back from them. They're like, "No, you're doing exactly what we want you to do." And I was like, "Okay." You know, like, I just want to make sure that I'm that I'm not crapping the bed on this because like, you know, this this, you know, this is a this is a big title that you're you're hyping a lot. And if people pick it up and go, man, this book looks like shit and they throw it in the garbage. That's my fault. Right. Like I totally because like this is a cool story. And it's I think, you know, sort of in the, you know, uh, a Krakoa era, kind of an important story. Yeah, and if people are skipping it because it looks like shit, like I blew it. Right. Like, that's no good. <laughs> Um, and I don't want to be the reason that somebody put down a book. I'm sure I have been for any number of people, but like, it seems more, more people than not are saying I, I did an okay job. So I'll take that. All right. On the promise and over deliver. Yeah, I, I guess. Right. I don't know. Man. <laughs> and so with that, like, I can imagine as you're saying, like, you know, you felt, you know, you weren't ready. Obviously we all know you were because we've seen oh, your, thank, your thank work. You, thank you. You know? It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> over like, delivered indeed. So then how was it for you? Then you accepted it. You're like, all right, sure, I'll do it. And then like, how has it been for you working on this X book and, you know, getting the draw, like iconic characters, like freaking Nightcrawler, Legion, you know, Onslaught, a lot of Charles. I think honestly, this book is one of the ones we've had the most Charles Xavier too. Like all the other ones, yeah. there's like there's moments he comes in and does something and then leaves, but he's like a main character. It's like a main character. And I think it's like the only book in the series thus far where he's like taken Cerebro off and you actually uh-huh. have to see his face, yeah. which was really weird for me. Yeah, we kept doing stuff, and I was like, "You guys, we don't. Nobody, nobody shows his face. Am I supposed to do this?" <laughs> like, it felt like I was breaking a rule, but then they were like, "Nope, you're good." And I was like, "Okay, I guess he's taking a rebro off." So, like, no, it was. It, I don't know, man. It was. Um, it was a lot of bucket list characters. That that's for real. Like the moment I was, you know, I was sort of in the door at Marvel. There was like a bunch of people I knew. I super duper wanted to draw, and like. Nightcrawler was on the list. And I got to do him, and like you know, it, well the other the other crazy thing about like all this Krakoa stuff is like there's so many mutants on that island. If you want to just sort of draw somebody that you like into the background, chances are you can do it. So it's like, like you know, in, like yeah, just kind of was like oh you know we'll, we'll put uh we'll we'll put 
you know, uh, we'll put Adam X in the background. Let's see if any gets anybody gets mad about that. Nope, nobody cared. All right, well, you know, let's let's put uh, I'll just put Wolverine in the background, and no, nobody's gonna care about that. I'll put Forget Me Not in the background. Let's see if anybody gets mad. Nope, nobody cared. So it's like they just kind of go, oh yeah, that's 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 a guy in the in the Marvel universe. We don't get too mad if he's back there. So I'm like, great. <laughs> And and actually building off of that, I think isn't there a story too in terms of like right you you can draw anybody you want in the background. Isn't there like a mutant that you kind of created <laughs> like once that the, mm -hmm. the mutant poop? What is it? So <laughs> there's I've I have yes. So okay. <laughs> and Take your time. Is this, look, Take there's there's, there's, Take not a, time. there's not an interview that goes by where I don't have to answer a question about this stupid <laughs> thing I did. So <laughs> all right. So here's what happened. Many, many moons ago, I was at the laundromat and we have a really nice laundromat by our place where they have like a super nice donut place where you can get yeah. donuts and coffee. And they have like a little seating area outside for when you're waiting for your laundry to get finished. You can go sit there. And I would invariably go with my wife. I would bring a sketchbook and a pen and like I would just doodle while we were doing the laundry. One day I drew a picture of a mutant and she was holding an ice cream cone in her hand and said, no, Professor Xavier, I poop ice cream. I poop ice cream better than anyone. And it was just a dumb joke. Right. And I, I saw an opportunity in this really long shot scene. I was like, let's see if anybody notices. So I was just like, I drew a picture of this ice cream pooping mutant in the background, like holding a cone of ice cream out in somebody's face and the person kind of recoiling uh, as everybody was sort of getting ready to go to the Hellfire Gala. <laughs> and <laughs> nobody said anything. So into the issue, she, she went and then out it was published. And now it's canon. And like at one point, it was the most visited page on like the Marvel fandom wiki. And like people were <laughs> updating it, and then like there was all this shit posting on Reddit about it, and it was just like uh, I I couldn't I couldn't believe it. And then and then the thing that mortified me the most was that people in interviews started asking poor Cy Spurrier about it. He had nothing oh. to do with it. He didn't know that I'd done it. Nobody knew that I did it. And I it, here's the thing: if I hadn't posted about it on Twitter, nobody would have known about it. Literally nobody would. But like I thought it was funny, and I thought four people are going to care about my poop joke, right? No, no, it, it set the internet on fire and I, I was very upset about it. <laughs> Actions have consequences. Yeah, I learned that the hard way. The, 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 the X-Men reading community gets real into this stuff, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're, you're basically like, that's a cult, man. Yeah, man. No, and so, exactly, yeah. now the character is canon. They exist. They're on Krakoa. They're they're actually you know they're dressed up for the Hellfire mm -hmm. Gala. So mm -hmm. we yes. want to know like right when is the solo series or the mini series at least of this person coming out? What is that uh, your next big book? Yep, that that's the one. You know what? Uh, you uh, J Jordan was like, hey Bob, we love this ice cream poop and mutant. Can't wait to see what happens. <laughs> let's get let's get that story out into the world. <laughs> there no. needs to be. It not only is it not happening, I don't think it's ever going to happen. <laughs> if, it, if it did, though, I'd be very pleased. <laughs> there needs to be a whole X-Men event where, like, it's like a catastrophic critical event. And the only way to save the Earth is with, <laughs> is with ice, ice cream, cream coming out of someone's butt. Yep. Absolutely. No, I, I actually I, I, I put a couple of different, like, weird make -em ups in the background that people seem to enjoy. So I have a, I have like a big I have a big lady who's like doing like a power bomb off of something and she, uh, I call her Slamazon and people <laughs> enjoyed that and then I have a girl who who is dancing at the at the party that's happening uh, and she and her entire mutant power is just to glow <laughs> that's all she does just like these useless idiots on on this on this beautiful island of like all these amazing superheroes and like I just came up with a bunch of morons who don't do anything cool. <laughs> Well, I mean, not all the powers are going to be useful. Like, it's just, it's exactly. like, a, I, I think it was in the third X-Men movie where the dude has to hug somebody with the spikes to kill him. The porcupine guy. Yeah. I believe in that. Like, that was an X-Men The Last Stand. Like, exactly. Like, not yeah. all powers are practical. And yeah. remember, remember, remember Gold Balls? Yeah. yeah right? gold ball At first, Gold Balls didn't have, like, a purpose, but then later on. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. now, look at what he does. He's resurrecting <laughs> mutants with the incredible eggs that came out of his chest. <laughs> exactly. He was using them as weapons for the longest time. What a goofball. This guy. <laughs> 
No, um, ice cream poop is the way. Yeah, man. Well, no, because there was a guy named Ice Cream, and he was like a he just melted. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Yeah, this oh, is no. a real guy. No, <laughs> he, he he would like melt into a puddle, and I guess he was like an assassin, so like he could get into places he wasn't supposed to. <laughs> like he would melt, and like he would go in places and kill people. I guess I don't know. Oh, good lord, Lord have mercy. Yeah, that's that's a real guy. So look, I'm not the first ice cream related, you know, superhero creator around here. <laughs> yeah, like you said, and, they're candid. Yeah, and exactly, and then and, and, and For better or worse, it's canon. And you just need, I think, pair up with the right writer to get because you know we've had like even like I remember when Grant Morrison run on the X Men, we got a lot of weird mutants in that sure. Morrison run, you know, that were like pretty much kind of useless other than being an interesting character, you mm-hmm. know. So, mm-hmm. so I I would love to see that down the road. Hey, me too. But does that character have like a legit name or it's just like poop? <laughs> Her name is Soft Serve. Soft Serve. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Of course it is. <laughs> that is awesome. Does she poop different flavors? Like, Absolutely. Is, does her diet consist only of ice cream or like? No, uh, her body is a portal to the ice cream dimension. So it's very <laughs> sanitary. Oh. Yeah. Now, now you're interested. <laughs> you want to know about this ice cream dimension. And so uh, do I. Yeah. Yeah. I was interested at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, then, see, this, this guy was out of the ground floor and I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, out of that whole amazing series, is there any specific panel that's like close to your heart that you just appreciate with everything? Like, what's your favorite panel from Way of X if you had to choose from all your babies? I can't I can't talk about it yet because mm. it happens Ooh. in Ons- it happens in Onslaught Revelation. Like wow. the, that, okay. that that book is my swan song on this series and i gave it every single thing i had it's it's got some of the craziest panels i've ever drawn some of the wildest art some of the some things that when i read the script i had no idea how i would ever make them happen and somehow did kind of manage to make them happen so um i don't know like i i really hope people pick it up because it's just it's completely insane the stuff that is in that book like there, there's nothing i promise you that there's nothing else going to be like it on the shelves now or for a long time it's very very strange <laughs> oh, no. but I very am, cool i am sure that people are going to definitely pick it up after reading way of x i am sure there is no way that people are not going to pick it up oh, i certainly way of x so. in itself it was just way too much fun it was way too much fun yeah, and exactly. And then everything's been building up to this. So as you're saying, I can imagine all the crazy things that's going to happen, right? Because we have like the Crucy Ball is going to is, is, is playing finally. Mm-hmm. We'll see it there. We have the Onslaught finally, like, you know, we'll see what happens with Onslaught's plan. Mm-hmm. And, and we have Legion who had like a Krakoan <laughs> seat in his head, mm-hmm. you know, and that's been like slowly cooking. Like, what's going on? It, so I You'll see. Oh. You'll see all of it. <laughs> you're going to see all of it next week. Yes. In a in a giant thirty page wrap up issue that 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 I still don't know how I drew. <laughs> and and when you got on the book, did you know from the get go that it was gonna be like a, a like a limited series? Because like for us, like when it came out, I had I thought it was just a new ongoing book, uh, not that it was gonna be only a few issues and then end with this onslaught uh, revelation. Uh, no, I mean uh, they they don't you know. I, I don't sort of get that information. Unfortunately, it was like, Hey, we're, we're doing this thing. It's a series. And like, you know, I, I, I don't know if they just kind of base how long it's going to run based on sales. I don't know if they do it. I, I don't know how they make those decisions. I know I'm certainly not privy to them really. Um, they just go, Hey, here's what you're scheduled to do. And I go, okay, sounds good. I can draw six issues of that. You know, <laughs> that's about it. And now, um, since you're basically done with mm-hmm. the whole way of X project and mm-hmm. you have um the onslaught revolution coming. Mm-hmm. Is is there anything that you might possibly have your eye on? Like out there in the future, something that like you wish that like you know what I want to be able like I hope I can go after this project. Oh, I mean I I'd super like to go back and and stick around in the in the X-Men universe if they'd have me but um mm. you know I've kind of been uh, that that was always my Marvel stuff like when when I was when I was reading Marvel like uh I always always liked X-Men that, that was always sort of my my favorite my favorite stuff um I my next book has been announced I'm working on a, uh, another book with Cy Spray I'm working on a Black Knight book with him 
Oh. Yeah. Um, for the, oh, yes. for the for the death of Doctor Strange uh, event that's happening. Uh, I just also put in uh, 10 pages on a thing I can't talk about yet. Mm. Um, you can tell the name us. of the project. It's, it's okay. You can tell us. Don't worry. I, I absolutely cannot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it will be out uh, next month. So keep your eyes peeled for that. It's some of the most fun I've had drawing anything in a long time. Um, just, just, just very joyful, the whole thing. So, uh, yeah. And then... Um, let me see. Uh, the, 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 uh, to, to be honest with you, I actually have been trying to get more uh, creator-owned stuff out there. I actually, I actually have recently uh, inked a deal with uh, with a certain publisher, and I'm going to have a book out probably in two or three years, I think, depending. So anyway, we'll see. That that, that that's a long lead on that little, that particular teaser for you. Anyway. <laughs> Nobody's gonna care in two years, but you know. <laughs> oh, listen, I'm going to have my eyes peeled. I will be emailing you in two to three years, like, hey, where's that book? Oh, don't worry. I, I will I will be tweeting about it incessantly. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Looking forward to the tweets. <laughs> All right. Next up, we got a rapid fire segment we want to do where we, right. we want you to decide. We have we pit two epic things against each other, and you decide which one hmm. comes out on top. Oh, I'm really bad at All these. Right. Let's go. Okay. Let, let, it's it's Let, time to start. make some enemies. Let's prime lightning you. rounds. Let's prime you. <laughs> All right. Metallica versus Megadeth. Metallica. That was easy. Okay. Okay. Woo. Let's go. Black <laughs> Widow versus Harley Quinn. The uh, the cinematic versions of that. Live action version. Oh, live, live action. action versions. Yeah. Oh, uh, in that case, I'd probably go Black Widow. Yeah, Black Widow. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. yes, that is the right answer. Good. Yes. Yes, I I know it is. That's why I said it. <laughs> <laughs> Sticking on the theme of, of live action, Joss Whedon's Avengers versus Zack Snyder's Justice League. Zack Snyder's Justice League, and I haven't even seen it. Yes. Oh, that would. Right. I don't even think that there was a measurable amount of time in between <laughs> the last letter he said and when you answered. Time to make some enemies. I don't yeah. like Joss Whedon at all. <laughs> so, well, yeah. Like, well, well just... a lot of people now do. Like, now that they know that, you know, apparently he's an ass and, you know, all these Let things. Let me be so. clear. I hated him from the Firefly days, okay? I've never oh, liked him. <laughs> yeah. so you're an OG of hatred. Yeah. I, I'm I'm an OG Joss Whedon hater, and I wear, the, I wear that crown proudly. Yo, people are finally catching up to you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But, hey. Way to get on like, the bus, on. kids. <laughs> we're, we're going to fun town where nobody's being a jerk and nobody's sexually harassing anybody yeah, or whatever. He's he did. done what with, he those, do he's done with yeah, those Activision people. And we're <laughs> 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 All right. We got oh, iPhone or Android. Uh, I've only ever had an iPhone, so I'll just say iPhone. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm adding this one just because. Okay. Strat or Les Paul? Fender Stratocaster. Oh, no, that's not Paul. fair. That's not no, fair. You have that's to. Not fair. No, because the, it depends on what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. no, 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 no. No, gun to your head right now. You can only take one with you back sure. to Minnesota, you know, like where you're moving to. Like, oh, no. well, uh, my, my, the, that's not oh. fair either because my, my Les Paul is way more expensive. So <laughs> that, that, that one's coming with, right? I'll buy another Strat. That's fine. <laughs> Damn. Fair enough. Fair enough. So Those are Paul cultured is. questions. <laughs> All right, and yeah. now live action versions Iron Fist versus Shang Chi. I haven't seen Ch uh, Shang Chi yet, so I don't know. It is amazing. You should. Okay, I'll just say Shang Chi then, because uh, <laughs> Iron Fist is only okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know yeah. what? Having seen it, I agree. Hey, all right. It, yeah, it's yeah. not even fair. It takes I just like intuited <laughs> that one. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Live action Shang Chi would whoop Finn Jones Iron Fist's ass. There you go. <laughs> oh my God! I knew and, it somehow. I knew it. <laughs> and, and I'm actually a little bit curious too. Like, yeah, I'm assuming you're extremely busy with all the work that you're doing. But how have you not seen Zack Snyder's Justice League? We're we're, we're all stuck at home right now with the pandemic. Come on. Um, I, 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 it was on HBO, right? We don't have HBO. I think that's what it was. HBO Max. Yeah. yeah, we don't have HBO Max here, so we, you know, we're, we're, we're cheap. So. All right. <laughs> I mean, HBO, H HBO execs watching, listening right now, give this man a <laughs> yeah. HBO execs, now. you know what you need to do. You're going to give me my email address. You need to give me that free content. I want to watch yes. these movies. Or 
<laughs> if you want to get archaic as fuck, all right. So check this out. You can go to Best Buy, right? There's a mm-hmm. section called the DVD section where they sell these crazy things that come in a case, right? It's okay, a CD okay. Called the DVD, right? So right. then you pay for that and you bring it home, and okay. then that hard that hard copy thing is yours. I've heard that that's a Bro, thing. Bro, Blu-ray though. Why you yeah, I know the DVD. DVD? <laughs> yeah, At he, he went back Blu-ray. so far, my mind actually short-circuited. I was like, I've never heard these words. DVD, <laughs> DVD. I am not familiar with this technology. <laughs> Sounds incredible. <laughs> I believe that they might be in the same section, though. But yeah, go old school. <laughs> straight up so what, Blu-ray. What do you watch, like, when you're trying to kick back? Um, I don't. I'm I'm a bit of a workaholic. My, I, I when I'm when I want to kick back, if I, because basically what here's what happens is like I'll sit here and I'll draw all day, and then usually my wife will watch TV and I'll kind of sit by her, and then I will usually draw something else while that's happening because like I don't super pay attention to TV. Uh, when TV is on and I get to pick, it's usually basketball or basketball <laughs> that's usually about what i watch or i'll watch hockey basically I'll, I'll put i'll put some sort of sporting event on so it's usually basketball hockey or uh, I'm, I'm a big formula one racing fan so oh wow yeah it's extremely refined oh i, I gentlemen i am very fancy <laughs> i can the guitars Piano, right? Oh, yeah, all piano. of it. Oh, Do you yeah. play piano yeah. while you watch the Formula One? <laughs> On occasion, yes, I will actually score the event in the back, <laughs> adding dramatic music to yeah. underscore the drama on the track. <laughs> Listen, make that a thing. I would pay to watch that. I would watch it. Yes, <laughs> stream it somewhere. We'll watch any. Oh, absolutely. Let's do it and get it out. There. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, Bob. Thank you. We don't want to take too much more of your time. You know, we, it's been wonderful to learn about all your <laughs> the different skills you have and the dedication Indeed. you have. Honestly, we love the stuff that you're doing, and we're glad to hear that there's still more things to come. Although you weren't able to tell us much of it, yeah, sorry. We'll, 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 we're, we're, we know it's going to coming out. What's going to come out, and and so for the fans out there, you know, uh, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on all your favorite social media websites at wildly different handles because I made them all at different times and I'm nice. terrible at branding. So if you want to see me on Twitter, it's Robot JQ, R O B O T J Q. If you want to see me on Tumblr, is that still a thing? A1 Courier. If you want to wow. see me on Instagram, it's King of Smaster. If you want to see me on Facebook, don't. I'm never on there, but it's Bob Q Draws. Uh, I think that's all the big ones. I think I had that Vero at one point, but that, I don't know. <laughs> and, and then obviously, obviously your website, bobqdraws.com. Oh yeah, bobqdraws.com, where I update it once every two to three years as soon as I have a, some downtime to actually put some pages up. I think the last thing it has on there is still my X-Men thing. Maybe Red Sonia? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you should put up some of the drawings from the notebooks on the website. Eh? How about no? <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna make sure I never get a job again. Let's put up a drawing from 2000. Actually, actually before we wrap, because I was thinking, I, I would totally see you being able to sell some of those like on a con. And but with that, actually, I want, was thinking, are you coming to New York City Comic Con or? No, I'm probably not. Just because uh, you know we're we're moving at the end of the month, and my life is going to be a complete shambles for the end of the year. So. Um, uh, and then on top of that, you know, I, I'm just I'm very plague averse in general. So like until things are a little bit more under control, I'm just kind of like not messing with it in any way. So I respect that. Yeah, I will. I will. Say, I will give a shout out to New York City because we're here. Right. And at least for the con, they're they're uh, they're demanding you have to be vaccinated uh, to go in. Hey, and and I know. love that, though. They're, and they were like demanding like either vaccination or, or, or proof of a uh, negative proof of a negative uh, test. Yeah. And like, I love it. NYC. Way to go. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful city. My kind of town. We're, we're trying. We're trying. Well, hopefully, we do get to see you down the road at one of the cons eventually. When you, I, I can't wait, like, man. I, I miss it so bad. Like I was supposed to go to Rose City this year, couldn't make it because obviously I'm packing all my stuff. It was I, I really, really wanted to go to Emerald City. They might cancel. Did they cancel? I don't know. So sure. who knows what's going on there? Uh, I don't know. I, I really, really miss going to them. I miss seeing people and saying hi and shaking hands and drawing pictures for people. So I don't know. One of these days. One of these days again. 
Yeah. Please. In today's day Please. and age, it feels like all the cons are basically just on the tee to totters. Yes or no, depending on which way the wind blows. So we just yep, exactly. got to take exactly. this ride. On that note, Mr. Quinn, it was an honor. Thank you very much. We definitely appreciate your time. Sir Bobbius of Quinius, a refined man, a renaissance <laughs> man of any. Fans, go yep. check out his work. And this is my Ted. absolute pleasure to be on the show, gentlemen. This has been a delight. Thank yes. you, sir. Thank you very much. And this is Miguel, right? This is right. Peace. Bye, guys. Peace. Bye.